name's Callum Tully. Two years ago, I was just another lad trying to work out what to do with the rest of my life. Then I got a job here, at a place you've probably never heard of, Brook House. It's an immigration removal centre, although it looks and feels more like a prison. I thought I'd be helping people facing deportation. But I couldn't have been more wrong. Absolutely no sympathy for my life. From the start, I was confronted with drug abuse, self-harm, and suicide attempts. Were you trying to kill yourself? No, he was just saying to me, "I want to die. I want to die." I saw some foreign criminals fresh out of prison, terrorising asylum seekers who'd never been inside, and I saw some staff abusing men locked up here. I didn't complain. I didn't think anyone would listen. Instead, I put on secret cameras for the BBC. So angry. I don't know how people could get away with things like that. This is my story of life on the front line of the UK's fight to control immigration. I never intended to be an undercover reporter. All I've ever wanted to be is a football referee. Straight out of school, I needed a job. Me and my mum were looking for jobs at home, and she spotted um, a vacancy available at Brookhouse Immigration Removal Centre. Went for the job and got it. I became a detainee custody officer, and Brookhouse, tucked away behind Gatwick Airport, was a different world. I was literally just a normal 18-year-old. And after a few months of working within the centre, I witnessed some things that probably most 18-year-olds wouldn't have witnessed. Just experiencing a complete toxic atmosphere. It's changed me from being a, a young, naive boy, not really much understanding for human suffering, into someone who just witnesses it firsthand in probably some of the most horrific ways. A year into the job, I told the BBC what I'd seen and became a whistleblower. Brook House is built like a prison and holds around 500 male detainees. More than half are seeking asylum or have overstayed visas. The others are foreign criminals transferred here after finishing prison sentences. Trouble can erupt in seconds over the smallest thing. What was it over? Egg. An egg? An egg. So we cut him. You come to the door, fella. The men here all face being removed or deported by the Home Office. Most don't know how long they'll have to stay. 
I want to get out of the world, lovely island. Why I have one week book that fight to go away from this fucking nightmare? You've got hardline criminals who have committed some really serious offences. Um, and then you've got people in there who have come over from places like Sudan and Syria and Eritrea who are seeking asylum in the country. How are you? They can all be locked up together across the five wings. If you've just got to relax, yeah? Just calm down, don't panic. Because the Home Office doesn't insist on segregation. The contrast between the asylum seekers and the migrants to the, the hardline criminals, they do swarm like sharks around small fish. And they'll just get eaten alive, just snapped up like that. <laughs> in Brook House, you can be put with any criminal in the same room. Guys were uh, like fighting with each other, banging their doors, screaming, shouting, and swearing. And you can't do anything. Just stay uh, inside your room. Where are you from? Originally, yeah, from Pakistan. No, no. Alef Jan's been detained three times since his student visa ran out. He's now living in Birmingham, applying for asylum. Because I'm here in the UK for nearly 16 years. Wow, really? I worked at hospital for four and a half years. Wow. I paid taxes. He was a doctor in Pakistan and he was working as a trainee audiologist at a hospital in London. I felt like I'm a criminal without any crime. Your mind is thinking what will happen to me, what will be the outcome, and why I'm here. It shouldn't be like this. The rules governing removal centres say they should provide secure but humane accommodation in a relaxed, safe environment. At Brookhouse, which is managed for the government by the multinational company G4S, detainees are let down right from the start. On the first night, it feels me like someone is coming to kill me. I couldn't sleep. My sleep was disturbed like throughout the night. The induction is B-Wing, where detainees spend their first few nights in Brook House. And they can be some of the toughest times uh, for new detainees, especially if they've, they've never spent any time in prison before. The induction wing is supposed to help detainees adapt to life inside. You right? Instead, they're confronted by drugs. Yeah, mate, sit down. Yeah. They gave me 10 years and violent ex-offenders. Yeah, uh, yeah, what yeah. you do? Uh, Drugs and uh, uh, guns. Gun. Yeah, three times. A quick look at the list of detainees on the wing shows exactly what's going wrong. Drugs, drugs. Uh, drugs. Incredible. He was plucking out each card of detainees that were involved in the drug and gang culture of Brookhouse, and he picked out um, at least eight detainees. Yeah, what? Yeah, what? Yeah, what? Yeah, what, big man? Yeah, what? Drug dealers and new arrivals, all mixed up together. Yesterday evening after dinner, I promise you this, right? It was like the walking dead there. Right? Like everyone was zombied out. All walking around, all stunned off their nuts. We're trying to run this as an induction, so all these new people, none of them are picking up any good habits or decent habits. Some of my fellow officers ask management to move the drug dealers off the induction room. But when I check a month later, more dealers have arrived. Still got some of the drug dealers on. He's come back. Is he, is he, is he, is he into drugs? Yeah. It's induction wing, no? Induction wing, mate. Right? <laughs> G4S says, with the knowledge of the Home Office, the induction wing is used when required to hold detainees from other wings. What's that smell? Huh? What's that smell? Weed. 
Drugs are everywhere in Brookhouse, not just on the induction wing. The wing just stinks. You must be spies. Spice, a chemical alternative to cannabis, is the drug of choice. It's cheap and can be deadly. You had a good old time, haven't you? Hey, well, let's try again. Hey, was, was that fun? We've got another one. That's going out the door, another one. It's a spice epidemic in Brookhouse right now. I'm just sick of seeing this stuff all the time now. I've just been seeing this shit for the last two years. It's constantly... So frustrating to watch when you're watching it week after week. Someone will die soon. Well, we were that close. Yeah. The other, what was it? Thursday? We were the first response in the ambulance. There was four of them. Oh, there was no shadow of a doubt. Someone was going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I don't have any hope. We see only worried faces every day. For detainees who don't take drugs, it just adds to the fear of detention. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. Yeah. Harshad Pirouet was a student and care worker in the UK and was detained after his visa ran out. He's very timid. He's extremely polite. I just want to sort of go up, put my arm around him, you know, tell him it's going to be fine, even though I don't really know that it will be. He's now back in India. He was removed from the UK after nine months in detention. In Brookhouse, they are very too much stressed and taking drugs. I have seen so many people there. They are suffering. They have problem with uh, spice. There are also effect of drugs. They can do anything. They are going too crazy. These drugs are banned. And I just don't understand. It's uh, selling in this brook house. One officer tells me drugs are coming in through the visits hall. Because I've always wondered how you think drugs get in here. Because obviously you work in visits. So. In the groups, in the family. In the what? In there and here. So do you think it still comes through visits? Uh, 80%. Yeah. Oh, really? She says many officers aren't taking it seriously. Staff is not vigilant. You're just going to sit there. You think it's a Chessington Park for you, so you're sitting behind the desk, chatting, chatting, chatting. They've done it by then. He's gone in the centre. Of course, 80%. Staff doesn't know what they're doing anyway. I don't really have a clue what I'm doing in here. This is the first time I've ever been in a visit hall. Would you know what to do if there's a drug pass now? Go up there, get off of them, and I call it on a wing, mate. I have no idea. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. G4S says it has a range of measures to monitor the visits hall and has an extensive training program to deal with new psychoactive substances like spice. Staff seem overstretched. Hello. The wings are often run with the minimum number of officers allowed by the Home Office. The general morale among officers is pretty poor. There's often two officers just left to one wing. We've got to deal with over 100 detainees. In a time shit, bang up shit, am I right? All of that shit. The whole everything shit. It affects the detainees massively because there's just not enough staff. One, two, three, three. And as a result, things are rushed. I miss some three detainees here. Three detainees. Roll count's called incorrect. This causes the detainees to be unlocked from their cells late, more time in their cells. There's no one counting the ground floor yet, is that what we're saying? This is all serious now. Is everyone ground floor? Has anyone counting the ground No, so we've got to go count the ground floor. Oh. And it just adds to what is already a very hostile environment. Check, guys. One, two, three. Three, good night. All the detainees were eventually accounted for. In Brookhouse, if you are like a nice person, very cool-minded, 
you will become aggressive because you are facing aggressive things most of the time. The behavior of the guys there and the behavior of the staff there. These are the two worst things. This is one of my bosses, detainee custody manager, Nathan Ring. What's he doing now? Got a gun in, checking out the wings uh, of his skull. Oh, he's a rolling round. An Iranian detainee is out of it on spice. Hurry up, get to the chorus, I know that bit. That's the middle. Is there any more? Is that it? Finished. That's the middle. It's a medical response, and my manager should be taking it seriously. <laughs> Is that cute? Does your face taste nice? Because you're putting your jewelry on. They steal your gear. Squeeze it. Yeah, you can do it. Nathan makes these situations a lot worse. He encourages staff to laugh. He leads the way um, with the taunts and, and the mocking. What's the best way to deal with him, Nathan? Leave him here. I can leave him. He can't go now. I can't go now. That's all he's hard now. That'd do it well again. Some of the officers and managers I don't know if that's their way of coping with the bleakness of Brick House or if it's because they just hate the detainees and, and don't care what sort of state they're in. I'm not sympathy for them. Absolutely no sympathy for them at all. If he dies, he dies. I hear about a new arrival who officers think was forced to test a batch of spice by his roommate. <laughs> <laughs> this is the roommate. He has a reputation for violence. That's who they think made him. Just like it. Yeah. That kid was That's him. That's why they moved him. How are you doing? Not good. Why? You don't want to be here. So how old are you? That's right. Huh? How old are you? 14. Whereabouts in This is the suspected drug skinny pig. I'm told his passport says he's 18. I don't think I've got a beer. They 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 think he's 18. God, they're saying he's 18. He's 18 at all. So I think he's 15, I think. G4S guidelines say the company's duty director and the home office must be told by staff if a detainee claims they're under 18. Tiny. Don't face. He's just really babyish. Do you reckon he's 18? I basically think he's younger than I'm not going to be the one him out. No. What do you want to be when you grow up? Me. Yeah. Mm. IT technician. After nearly two weeks at Brook House, the boy is removed into the care of social services. The Psalms could be seen as a critique of institutions that just don't listen. Move forward a few thousand years, and what's changed? Nathan Ward became a priest two years ago. He used to be a senior manager for G4S. The Lord be with you. I show him my footage. What you have there is a child in an adult prison to all intents and purposes. We stopped doing that, um, gosh, over 100 years ago, I think. One of the detainees allegedly used to have a skinny pig to test spice. This is child abuse, isn't it? When Nathan Ward worked for the company, he wrote guidelines on how to deal with detainees suspected of being under 18. Everyone has failed in this circumstance. The immigration officer picking him up 
because the policy is very clear that if they suspect him to be under 18, that they need to take action at that point. The reception need to take action, who admit him into the centre. The staff on the wings need to take action. The Home Office need to take action. Everyone has failed this child. The Home Office says his age is in dispute, so policy on handling these cases hasn't been breached. G4S says it can't comment on specific cases, but any age concerns are raised with the Home Office and social services. Three years ago, Nathan Ward raised concerns about the behaviour of some staff at Brook House, with the managing director for G4S Detention Services. The vast majority were good, decent people, that, but there was a group that actually concerned me on their relationships with detainees. It was around language that they used, a sense of roughness and use of force, how force was used. Body of Christ, keep you in town. After working for G4S for nearly 13 years, he resigned in 2014. I left working there because, to all intents and purposes, I couldn't cope with it anymore. It's as simple as that. This detainee who we're calling Abbas is 20 years old and originally from Egypt. He's just been transferred from prison. I'm told he has a conviction for assault. He's on suicide watch after trying to self-harm. An officer called Calvin is sitting in his room. If you want me to take over, just give me a shout, yeah? I'll get through to him eventually. What's he been doing? Well, I keep trying to put his hand over his neck and beat him like that. Fair enough, mate. CCTV cameras monitor Brookhouse, but not inside detainees' rooms. Calvin later tells me what he got up to when no one was watching. I was sat in there on a the table right next to him. Literally, I was talking to him, and obviously, when I was in the middle of the he was banging his head. As he was banging, I was like, something the camera there. <laughs> and he was trying to do that to himself, push his finger right in his neck. So I got his finger in front, and I got the tears stopped me doing it. <laughs> He's telling me how he banged the detainee's head and bent his fingers back. That's funny. He was entertained. You know, so it's to hurt yourself, you're attention seeking, aren't you, little prick? No, I don't sympathy for anything. What you need to do... Calvin will just openly confess to assaulting detainees in front of officers, and it's so commonplace that he just, it doesn't get challenged. No-one really bats an eyelid. Prick and he's been trying to do that to his neck. It's all of what he had there. I think it's went like that, not that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's the punch him in his face, and he's gone like that. <laughs> what is the best way to deal with someone like that? Turn away and hopefully swinging. Probably. <laughs> this officer, hoping a bass will swing, later told Panorama he denies any wrongdoing. <laughs> Across the UK, there are 11 immigration removal centres, which every year detain around 30,000 people, the majority for less than 28 days. But last year, more than 200 people were held for over a year. The immigration centres were originally designed as merely short-term holding centres. Unfortunately, the procedures have got so long-winded and, I mean, the Home Office cannot get down to a quick day-to-day -day processing. And as a result, people are held in these centres for months and years. G4S has been paid more than £100 million by the Home Office to run Brook House since it opened in 2009. Back then, it was only meant to hold detainees for up to 72 hours. I've met detainees who've been detained for years. Never be one of the fucking chosen in the It can be desperate. Why are you closing the door in my face? This is the welfare door, you know? Yeah, We're coming in for welfare! Welcome. I thought I'm going to get deported straight away when my sentence get finished. 
people start telling me, I may get transferred to the detention centre. Mustafa Zatouni came to the UK on a false passport and was transferred to Brook House after finishing a prison sentence for theft, assault and possessing drugs. He was deported back to Algeria three months ago. The detention more worse than uh, prison. In detention centre, you never know how long you're going to be. One day, one year, or three or four years. It's waiting game, the worst, the killer, the waiting game, man. That's what they do in detention. I want to go, you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to go. He waited for 11 months before being told to get ready to leave. I was really happy. I was really happy. I prepared everything. My flight was 7 o'clock in the morning. T7, they came to me, oh, sorry, your flight been cancelled because the uh, Algerian embassy, they didn't provide a uh, travel document. I was expected to get free that day and see my people and my family. So I have to uh, go and protest. I filmed him staging his protest on netting designed to prevent suicides. He thought he was going home. He has razor blades. He's just come up to the airport, he's managed to get planes in his hand. He's waiting to go, mate. He's waiting to go, mate. So why is... Oh. So now he's really angry. He's meant to have gone, but they fucked up his travel document. He's been here like a year, hasn't he? I know. He wants to go. Bad, isn't it? A lot of people had sympathy for this guy because he's, he's happy to go back. He's on the netting. He's protesting. He's got razor blades. He's a risk to staff. He's a risk to himself. Staff aren't allowed on the netting unless a detainee is in immediate danger. A specialist team called the Nationals is called in to get him down. Keep blinking, keep blinking. Right, it's going to be a lot better now. They used a spray to subdue him. The next day, Mustafa is calmer, but still frustrated. But I don't understand. Maybe I've done something idiot. How about immigration? This is a removal center, you're removing people in it. And I want to go. Yeah. And you see what's going on now. Yeah, I know what you're saying, I know what you're saying. Mustafa had expected to be deported as soon as he finished his sentence. Deportation straight from prison was suggested to the Home Office nearly 20 years ago. I recommended when anyone was sentenced to be deported that that deportation should be processed while they were in prison so that at the end of their prison sentence they were taken straight to the airport and out. It could be done if ministers willed it to be done. It's common sense. While Mustafa was on the netting, Brookhouse staff were on standby, ready to deal with him. G4S restraint trainer John is supervising when I ask him for advice, he tells me to use racist language. John, I'm just thinking, mate, what am I doing? Just walking backwards in front of him, and if he kicks off, get his head down. Hey, listen to me, mate. Listen to me. <laughs> we wait in a stairwell for several hours. One of the officers said, you shouldn't be able to get away with this. And that was when John Connolly just went off on one. Yeah, the thoughts about him getting off. John was saying that if this detainee wasn't going to go voluntarily, that we'd drag him into this corner and we'd fuck him up. He stares. That's why I just took action for fucking throwing him in that corner and fucking dealing with him in that fucking yeah. corner. Yeah. Can't be fighting on the top of the stairs. Can you? No. I'll just grab the we don't get called in. I'm relieved they don't get the chance to attack Mustafa. Mustafa's travelled across the border from Algeria to Tunisia. He's agreed to meet a BBC crew. He doesn't know I've come to show him my undercover footage. We 
Mustafa. Yes. Eh, eh, Ernie, you're fucking joking. <laughs> <laughs> How are you What's up, real brother? How are you what doing? are you doing here, man? You're right. I've come to see you. Oh fuck, man! This is not G Fires, man. <laughs> no, not G How are you doing, us. man? Go it's on. good to see you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Good so, um, when I was in Brook House, yeah, I was wearing secret cameras. I was wearing hidden cameras. Unbelievable, man! <laughs> I remember you with the suit track and you know, yeah, coming track suit. <laughs> track yeah, suit yeah. And, oh, you guys, you want to come to the gym? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's good to see you, man. It's good, good to, to see you. you too, man. Yeah, after you. How does it make you feel knowing that whilst you were protesting on the netting? It's not surprising anyway, you know? I had that shit face to face, you know? They say it to me in front of me, you know what I mean? They treat us as animals then. They have to watch those officers and what they're doing, and you know what I mean? Not like just let them do what they want. I don't want to remember that shit, man. I'm lucky I'm free, man. And I feel sorry for guys in detentions. getting kitted up in riot gear for a deportation. The detainee doesn't want to go. Over the edge. Yeah. Anywhere between the knee and the front. Yeah. It's him and Vinco. What, with the shield? Yes. Yeah. You don't stop till he's got nowhere else to go. I was going to be the shield officer. The person who is first in the cell during restraint. He has the right shield in hand and he places it onto the detainee if necessary. The detainee has a history of violence and a conviction for attempted murder, but I'm also worried about his health. Just to make me that little bit more nervous, I was told that this detainee had a number of operations on his heart. Um, he had suffered from a heart attack in the past. Two experienced officers called Dave and Yan are less concerned. One officer said, if he dies, he dies. I didn't want to kill this guy, you know, I didn't want to harm this, this man. We just, I just wanted to go in there, do the job. Why do this, sir? Why do this for me? Because I'm sick. Three heart attack I have. No, I don't want to go. Fuck in a row. Ah! Ah! He's desperate not to be deported back to Romania. I don't I don't yeah. Such a stressful environment to be in because you never know what could happen. You fear the worst in that situation. Come on. The guy. I'm not feeling good. I'm not good. I mean, I'm not going. I mean, I'm not going in my country. Big problem. You big shit, man. Fucking mother. I thought then that that was the end of it. We'd seen the back of this guy, and I didn't have to worry about seeing him again. But I was wrong. Later that day, I see him in the visitor area. That's him with his back to me. How is he back here? How's he got the plane? Oh, I have a hard thing. I cannot go. And the pilot fucking took him out. Back earlier. It's a fucking joke, isn't it? All that effort and hard work everyone put in. It's fucking long, isn't it? Doesn't make any sense. I met other detainees in Brookhouse who can't be deported because they're challenging Home Office attempts to make them leave. It can take a long time. Some of their cases are difficult to resolve. How long is it now? I've lost count, man. Come in here, October 2015. No way. Yeah, you've been here ever, ever since I can remember. Yeah, well, I've been here long. This detainee, who we're calling Paul, came to the UK when he was six and doesn't want to be deported to Somalia where he was born. I'm fucking British, mate. They didn't know where to take me, bro. Yeah, my whole family's in the UK, bro. I've got nieces and nephews that are born since I've been in here, yeah? They don't fucking know me, bro. 
His permission to stay in the UK was revoked when he was convicted of burglary and drug offences. Yes, I went to prison, yeah. I've paid my time, yes, I have made a mistake. But this, this is not fucking, this is not prison, though. You're only supposed to be here, yeah, if you're getting moved imminently. One month, maybe, two months. But I'm not here after fucking two years, I'm still in here, bro. The UK is the only country in the European Union which doesn't put a specific time limit on immigration detention. Some people are being held for years. Should there be an end? Yes, but for everyone. I mean, it's either staying here or going home. There's got to be an end. You can't keep people in detention forever. You getting your hair cut? <laughs> All detainees can apply for bail so they can fight their cases outside detention. The Romanian detainee with heart problems, who wasn't deported, has a hearing tomorrow. Everything good, yeah? Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. I have been built for a bail hearing tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Two days later, I go to his room. Oh, jeez. Oh, my days. Oh, look, it's clothes. Yeah, right. I went into this cell and there was blood all over the floor, over the bed sheets, over the shower curtains. In the corner of his room, there was just blood-soaked clothes just lying there. His bail application had been refused. I'm chopped up to my Really? Yeah. Neck, neck, wrist, dip on top of the Loads of blood. No way. Right. 50 pills. What? His heart meds. Heart medication. What happened with 50 pills? He took them. He took them all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? You can see blood oozing. He was just saying to me, I want to die, I want to die. I speak to the detainee after he comes out of hospital. They didn't get you out? They didn't get you out. The judge. Shit judge, that's right. Stick your arm out, let me see. Let me see. Shit. Oh, jeez. I'm, uh, I'm lucky because I'm not dying. Did you think you might die? Yeah, I think, yeah. Because you lose, you lose a lot of blood? Too much blood. It's today morning. It's coming blood. He's committed some horrific crimes. He, he isn't a nice guy. But we're in a situation where staff are literally having to drag him to an airport where he ends up coming back from anyway. He applies for bail. He self-harms. It's twisting him up on the way. Staff are becoming disturbed as a result of his actions. Paul, the detainee who was born in Somalia, has just been told he's about to be transferred to another removal centre. He snaps. Staff rushing. He's moved later the same day. I don't know what will happen to him. I show my footage to a psychiatrist who's a leading specialist in the effects of detention. It's, from a clinical point of view, not at all surprising that this man is enormously distressed by the length and indefiniteness of his detention. The chances of not being adversely affected mentally by prolonged and indefinite detention are very low. At Brookhouse last year, there were 53 cases of detainees needing medical treatment for self-harm. There were another 451 where detainees were judged to be at risk of hurting themselves. Detainees very often talk about that notion of being somewhere where you are um, confined, where you have very little control, very little choice over anything, over what happens in your day. That lack of control, I think, is an important part of the, the distress that leads to worsening mental health. It's lunchtime. I have to make sure all the detainees have eaten. I have a checklist to tick. This detainee hadn't eaten his lunch, so I went to his room to ask him, you know, why haven't you eaten? You eaten? Yeah, I'm not going to 
climate job. Nobody be protested. He was refusing to eat because uh, he wasn't he wasn't happy about being in Brook House. Refusing food is one way the men at Brook House protest about their detention. Last year, 316 cases were recorded. I think it could be more than that. Do you want to eat or not? I'm on duty again with detainee custody manager Nathan Ring. I tell him the detainee won't eat. He tells me to say the man has eaten when he hasn't. The recording of food refusal ought to be the start of finding out a bit more. It's extremely serious because food refusal may be indicative of poor mental health and it may cause deteriorating physical health in extreme form, even be fatal. Later, I'm still worried, so I raise it again. I think with a lot of officers, you do see them become desensitised because it just becomes the norm. It's something you do and you, you witness every single day at work. People can't cope and, 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 and hand in their notice, but others just, they do become immune to the pain and suffering that they see. And then some actually turn to the other side and, and actually take part in the abuse. An officer is shouting at a detainee who has mental health problems. This is E-Wing, where vulnerable detainees can be held in rooms on their own. They should be closely monitored and given support. Listen, listen. Stop fucking about. You understand? Stop. I don't want to come back in this room again. You'll be in trouble, all right? How are you? I have to know that you're not going to take any, any shit off them. The detainee is so ill that he was taken to a psychiatric hospital two days later and sectioned. The Home Office says policies introduced last year strengthen the presumption against detention for particularly vulnerable people, whilst improving the diagnosis and treatment of mental health conditions. Oi, take the stuff down from the viewing panel. Just take it down. Do it your fucking self! Just take it down. The detainee shouting is on medication and has threatened to harm himself. It's a stressful situation. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. Just chuck milk at me. But that's no excuse for how the officers treat him. Shut up a minute. Your fucking attitude. Well, hang on now. This is going to go to the kitchen. This is going to go for you. Piss us off. You won't have a shower. You won't have something. Help us and we'll help you. The people behaving in this way seem to be attributing his behaviour to wanting to annoy them rather than entertaining the possibility that it might be because of the underlying mental illness. They are going to punish him, they're going to show their contempt for him. That is extremely bad for anyone, but it's even worse for someone that they know is mentally ill. There's an emergency on A-Wing. A detainee's tried to kill himself. Has he tied something to the... Um, no, it's not what's the, No, but what's that tied around the actual um, bracket? It? I find him shaking the floor. I swear, I'm so scared, man. What, do you think, what, do you try to hang himself? Are you trying to kill himself? I don't know what's up. Sir, are you trying to hurt yourself? Come on. Did you get some bad news or something? Good news over here. Good news? Two years. That's good news. Two years? Yeah, two years. Is that why you did it? I'm fed up. I want to I'm fed up myself. I lose everything. I don't care about nothing. 
Seeing things like this is upsetting for detainees and officers. The first attempted suicide I was called to stays with me to this day. I went to bed that night and didn't sleep. And then nightmares start to happen. It replays back in your mind. I was signed off with stress-related disorder for about two and a half weeks. When you know you're a cog in the machine that has made him feel that level of desperation, the impact that you're having on the lives of these people is difficult. Yeah. I'm back on Ewing, where vulnerable detainees can be held. I see Abbas, a 20-year-old Egyptian, who an officer told me earlier he'd abused. Get staff! Get staff! Get staff! We need someone to get someone from the office! He's got something round his neck. <laughs> that sound is Abbas choking. It's a mobile phone battery. It's got a battery in his mouth. What do you do? Just sit here all every night? Take your battery out of your mouth. Detainee custody manager Nathan Ring is on scene. Another opportunity to mock a detainee. It's a the battery. It's the battery. So he wants to use his dummy? This nurse has also been called in. Do you know what exactly his problem is? It's an arse, basically. Along with detainee custody officer, Jan Pascali. How old is this guy? He's going to his pocket for it. Manager Nathan Ring leads me to watch a bass. What happens next? is the most distressing treatment of a detainee I see during my time undercover at Brookhouse. What are you doing? Stop it. Stop. Mate, don't. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Give us a hand. Guys, please. Give us a hand. He's trying to strangle himself with his hands. Stop. Get your hands off. Don't do that, mate. Don't do it, mate. Don't do it, mate. Don't do it, mate. Don't do it, don't do it, mate. Don't stop. Jan comes in to help and holds his head to my left. Relax, relax. 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 He only basically stuck both of his fingers into his neck and he was pushing so, so hard. I could hear the detainee trying to gasp for, for, for breath. <laughs> I actually thought Jan was going to kill him. <laughs> and, and I said, Jan, Jan, easy, easy. Jan, 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 easy. Jan, Jan, easy. Right, you're going to stop being a tool now, yeah? You're going to stop being an idiot. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? After the violence, more mocking. Other officers monitor him. I've seen enough. Just 
angry. Just that place is. I don't know how people could get away with things like that. <laughs> You've got, in one sense, a perfect storm here, haven't you? You've got a physical restraint going on which is dangerous in itself. You've got a nurse who just thinks the man is an arse, and you've got a member of staff strangling him. The risk of life is enormous. I feel sickened by it. People should serve a prison sentence for what they're doing there. Sorry, mate. If I hadn't been filming, it's possible no one would know what had happened to Abbas. Yeah, sorry, Ann, mate, you know I'm fucking like the CNR, you know what I'm saying? Well, that CNR is control and restraint and involves the permitted use of force. No use of force support? OK. Home Office rules say the use of force should be documented. But Yan, the officer who could have killed Abbas, doesn't want that to happen. Are they putting that down as a restraint? Uh, I think as it stands, according to what Jan just told me, they're gonna, just going to leave it. Even the nurse appears to be going along with it. T-shirt round his neck, angry and upset, made a tongue battery in his mouth, took the sauce from the lady to her, let the observations only due to demeanour. Yeah, that's what I can say, isn't it? She's reading from her notes, but mentions nothing about the restraint, even though she'd been in the room when it happened. Later in the staff room, Jan tells me I need to toughen up. Very difficult to explain. Callum had a taste. He got a bit upset. He was saying he cried. <laughs> what I'm trying to explain is the likes of us. Mate, we don't cringe at breaking phones. How far should I go with this? Oh, that's it. Is that it? If I kill this, I'm going to fall. Carry on. Jan Pascali later told Panorama he couldn't think of anything he'd done that would get him into any trouble. It's too simple just to look at the individuals, even though their actions are deplorable. We need to look at the people that have put these people in place and allowed them to do what they've done. I blame the Home Office for allowing G4S to get away with these excesses. People have got to work out what is needed to put a system in place which really can be A, humane, B, decent, and C, quick. The Home Office says the dignity and safety of those in its care is of the utmost importance, and they regularly and closely monitor Brook House. It says the detention of people without the right to remain in the UK who've refused to leave voluntarily is key to maintaining an effective immigration system. It says it's already ordered a review into the welfare of detainees in immigration detention. Ten people have been suspended as a result of my investigation. After Panorama contacted G4S, it said once it's seen my evidence, it will take appropriate action. It says any such behaviour is not representative of the many G4S colleagues who do a great job, often in difficult and challenging circumstances, and that it investigates all complaints and has confidential whistleblowing channels for staff and detainees. Brook House was inspected last year and told it was reasonably good and making excellent progress. From the inside, that's not what I saw. I'm an illegal immigrant and I shouldn't be in UK at the first place. I don't have problem with that. Brook House, you know, they... I'm not saying to close it down because they need places like that, but I think they have to change their policy and, you know, that's not fair to keep people for months and months and months.
they have life exactly for like anyone else. And you know, to miss one day in society, you never have it back. Please keep prison people different and detention people in different center, please. If you want to detention period, please keep very small time, not too much. I think two weeks, six maximum, but more than two weeks, very bad for every candidate. I have a great fear to be detained again. I don't know what was the strategy to be detained and then released. I think immigration policy, uh, I can say it, it doesn't work properly. It should be changed. <laughs> Nine days after he was choked by Jan Pascali, the Egyptian detainees in the suicide prevention netting. Some staff think he's unhappy about washing up. But I know what he's been through. What is the best way to deal with someone? <laughs> After all that, two months later, Abbas's roommate tells me he's now been released. It's lucky, eh? Lucky. To be released, to be deported, you've been ah, freedom. Yeah, yeah. But you've been released. Nah, but stay. There's no good. Stay here, I guess. No good. So it was my last day, my last shift at Brook House. I've waited for this moment for such a long time and I can't believe that I'm never going to have to go back. I genuinely can't. But I'll only be able to get closure from that place if we can make it better, if we can make a change, and change needs to happen there.